Good morning, Lewistown. Good morning. I said, good morning, Lewistown. <laughs> Amen. I'm Pastor Mark Claiborne. I'm the pastor here at Lewistown United Methodist Church here in Thurmont, Maryland. I want to welcome you to our time of worship. We are blessed. We are blessed. Let me be the first to say happy St. Patrick's Day. Glory. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. So many of you have on green and you look great. Oh my gosh. I don't have on any green. And so I've already been threatened by a couple of the members that some snakes are going to get me. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Lord have mercy. So I did want to mention this though. I do have some green on me. my offering my offering amen 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 so please don't come running up on me and pinching me from behind or anything like that <laughs> lord have mercy lord have mercy you know psalm 95 verse 2 it says let us come before his presence with thanksgiving and make a joyful noise unto him with psalms praise be to god the second thing that i do want to mention in our early announcements is yesterday I went down to the University of Maryland to see the final basketball game of the year uh, for those Frederick High Cadets. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Boy, oh boy, did they set our souls on fire. Let me bring the news to all of you that the Frederick High Cadets are the 4A, uh, 4A regional, no, not regional, state champions. They won a state championship yesterday down at the University of Maryland. And I had the pleasure of uh, being there with my family. You watched it on TV? Amen, Bobby. <laughs> Amen. North Carolina lost. Oh, yeah, North Carolina lost. Yeah, you're talking about the ACC tournament. Yeah, yeah. But, um, but it was great. It was great to be there and, and to have uh, my wife and my, my uh, daughters with me there to uh, enjoy in that celebration. Even though my wife went to TJ, she still was pulling for me, right? <laughs> She's like, you know what, I'm going to put that aside and I'll pull for you. Because uh, the last time we won a, a, a state basketball championship at Frederick High School, I was in the 10th grade. Me and Dawn, we were in the 10th grade. And that was 1982. So we're talking 42 years ago. It's been a long time for us as far as the boys go. Now, the girls. They won a couple state championships. They won uh, in 2011, 2017, 2018, and 2019. But the boys, it's been a long drought. And so we were blessed yesterday. And our motto at the school has always been, enter to learn, go forth to serve. Enter to learn, go forth to serve. I like that, I like that. And so, uh, and so I am just blessed and overwhelmed with joy. Um, it's such a blessing to see everyone here in the sanctuary. We give thanks for those who are watching the service online. Praise be to God. I mean, and, and I do hope that, uh, that everybody uh, feels the presence of the Lord in the service today. I pray that the Holy Spirit is moving from breastplate to breastplate to breastplate. My gosh. And I pray that you feel the love in the atmosphere. Why? Because love lives here yes yes it does yes it does if you are watching on our youtube channel online we ask that you click the thumbs up icon let us know who you are where you're watching from and how you like the worship service for those of you in the sanctuary please just take a quick minute or two to fill out the attendance pad and pass that over to your neighbor you may have noticed that mary fran is not here today our our organist they all went over to maris's hospital because her husband mr boston uh, was rushed to the hospital. He fell and hit his head. And so we will keep that family uplifted in prayer. I did talk to Fran earlier this morning. Um, and so she said she will keep us up to date and informed as to how her dad is doing. So please keep them in prayer. Amen. Amen. And so, beloved, as we begin our passionate worship service, may the love of God and the compassion of Jesus Christ and the power of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore as we are blessed to have Miss Pat, who will open us up with our prelude. Thank you, Miss Pat. Amen. <laughs>
Good morning. We welcome you to our church service. We know Easter's coming soon, and so we anxiously wait to celebrate Christ as his triumphant victory over sin and death. We give thanks to you, O oh God. You see us and our imperfections with compassionate and patient eyes as we struggle to rid our lives of all the worldly things that distort, distract, and entangle us. As the cross looms ahead, May our eyes and our focus remain on you and you alone for our redemption and salvation. Our opening hymn is number 593 in the red hymnal. Stand if you're able. Remain standing for our call to worship. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Jacob. God has made a new covenant with us in Christ Jesus. Yet we have turned away 
hardened our hearts and spirits. Lord, help us to change. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts, and I will be their God, and they shall be my people. Help me. Turn again, says the Lord, through the prophets and through God's own Son. Turn us again to you, O Lord, and awaken our spirits to your love and mercy. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. If you'd like to read along with me in the prayer of confession. Compassionate Lord, forgive us when we falter on this Lenten pathway when the road ahead seems too uncertain and we are afraid. We admit that following Jesus is not as easy task. Jesus requires us to be willing to make the ultimate commitment of our whole lives and we hesitate and hold back. Draw us back to you, Lord. Give us confidence and courage to face the future with hope. Let us place our trust in you that the message of peace and mercy you have given us through Jesus Christ, may we be offered to others through our own witness to your healing mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. For our words of assurance, even though the future is clouded, God is with us, guiding, healing, comforting, restoring. Rejoice. In the name of Jesus Christ, you are forgiven and healed. Amen. 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 At this time, we uh, want to dismiss the children for Sunday school. Tracy, do you have any announcements? Um, Sunday, next Sunday, our Easter egg extravaganza. Uh, so please bring all the children out. We, we're going to have a great time. Thank you, Tracy. To God be the glory. Uh, before we go into our pastoral prayer, there, there are announcements in your bulletin, so please read over those uh, and let you know that all of the things that are coming here at Lewistown United Methodist Church, um, there are a couple of things that I do want to highlight. Uh, we are asking for uh, volunteers for helping with the children's ministry as always so if God is putting your spirit to help with the children by all means let us know we're also asking uh, for some help with the, the, the media ministry uh, Charlie does this Sunday after Sunday after Sunday and he does an amazing job of getting all of that together and he does an amazing job during worship service with making sure that we have everything on the screen that we need uh, matter of fact, he's done such a good job that we've gotten lazy. We don't even carry our Bibles anymore. And so we thank Charlie for uh, his obedience and, and his sacrifice. But we are asking uh, for some help. And so, uh, you know, if God is putting your spirit to help with the media, the media team, please let us know uh, so that we can get you connected with Charlie and start to get you trained up um, to give, give him some help. Um, also, we're still asking for some volunteers for the potato drop, which is March the 30th. March the 30th is two weeks, um, and that will be at Trinity United Methodist uh, Church. Also, volunteers for the Slippery Pot Pie uh, in April. And so there are sign-up sheets for both of the events on uh, the table in the fellowship hall. Um, so please take a moment and sign up. Um, uh, we mentioned last week that Andy is going to do a presentation that will be this Saturday, March 23rd, here at the church at 12 p.m. And so he will have a presentation along with some pictures um, explaining about his trip that he took a couple months ago. And so I'm excited uh, to be here for that presentation and to hear all about Andy's amazing and awesome trip. Um, and the social committee, the social committee is planning on um, providing some, some food, some snacks for the luncheon. All right. Um, are there any other announcements or prayer concerns we want to lift up? As I mentioned early in the service, please continue to pray for Mr. Boston uh, and their family as he took a fall 
and uh, has been rushed to Meredith Hospital. Uh, Dawn. Um, just a reminder that we next Sunday will be the last to collect the teddy bears for the teddy bear drive and for the bins for the food bank. So if everyone can please, if you're willing to bring it all in by next Sunday. Okay, thanks Dawn. Uh, Ms. Gale. All right, Ms. Linda. Uh, for Joyce Ziegler, she has gone back to the hospital. Uh, she needs prayers. Okay, we'll keep Ms. Joyce uplifted in prayer. Uh, Ms. Karen. Uh, a family of Clarice Martin, who's passed. All right, the Martin family. Please keep them uplifted in prayer. Ms. Gale. Um, with regard to the pot pie, sup, pot pie sale, yesterday we had chicken picking. Our freezer is stuffed full of chicken and broth and everything else. Uh, but there are chicken bones out there in the refrigerator that are still good to cook off if you want to make soup. So anyone that wants chicken bones, you're welcome to them. And thanks. We had such a good turnout yesterday. It was wonderful. Thank you, everyone. All right. Yes, thank you all for the volunteers coming out for the chicken picking. Chicken picking in preparation for our Slippery Popeye. Uh, Ms. Shirley. Prayers for Rob and Susan Wedge, both dealing with some health issues. Any other fair concerns we want to lift up? Any joys? Also, uh, we want to keep Mr. Ripien uplifted in prayer. He has a procedure coming up in the beginning of April. So let's keep him in prayer as well. Ms. Summers? She's got a birthday girl here Oh my gosh, the birthday girl. How old? 95. Amen. Amen. We want to wish you a happy birthday. And and we pray for many, many more. Amen, amen. So you look great, you look great. How do you feel? <laughs> Wonderful, amen, amen. That is what 95 looks like and feels like. You see her smile, amen, amen. Any other praise reports or uh, joys or concerns we want to lift up in prayer? Any other prayer concerns? If not, let us all be reminded and let us remember that when there is no prayer, there is no power. Little prayer, little power, but when there is much prayer, there is much power. Yes, 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 and uh, the prayers of the righteous availeth much. Let us keep that in mind, and also let's please keep in prayer our fire department across the street who does an amazing job of keeping this community safe uh, let's keep the, the children down the street at the elementary school uplifted in prayer, as well as the teachers and administration and the parents. And let's keep all of our members here at Lewistown United Methodist Church uplifted in prayer. Lord have mercy. The ones who can make it out, the ones who are homebound, and let's keep those uplifted in prayer who are watching online. We all have prayer concerns. We all have prayer needs. And so let us just pray for one another as we go to God in prayer. And so gracious God, we come to you this morning with humble hearts and thankful thoughts of you. And we thank you for the time that you have allowed us to come together and worship today. We have people here in the sanctuary and people watching online and, and, and we're just so thankful that you are God and you are a God that, that watches over everything that is going on. My goodness, we give thanks for your omnipresence that stretches far and wide across this entire world. You're so worthy of all praises. Your word says that if we don't praise you, the rocks are going to cry out. We don't want any rocks crying out for us. As sure as we have breath in our body, we come praising you, O oh God, and lifting up the name of Jesus. We give thanks that you inhabit the praises of your people. It brings us joy to know that, that you live in our praise, that you dwell in our praise, that you, you get excited when we shout hallelujah to your name. And so thank you for always being with us and always being by our side, never leaving us nor forsaking us, for keeping all of your promises and being true to your word. You are omnipotent. You are Jehovah Jireh, our provider. You are such an amazing God. 
And so this morning, we lift up all of our concerns to you, all of the concerns on the prayer list, all of the concerns of the people who are watching online. And we ask that you provide our every need, that you make a way for our breakthrough. We have confidence in you because you are a way maker. You are a rock in our salvation. And whenever we are gathered in your name, you promise to be in the midst and bless us with the things that we touch and agree upon. And so we come asking that you restore the health of those who are sick. We come asking that you give strength to those who are homebound, give shelter to the homeless, give people the power to reject temptation and overcome their addictions. We come asking that you give us hope that you will be our bridge over troubled waters, that you will give, give us the faith that we need, especially in our times that we are faithless. May you continue to shine your light in us and through us and all around us. We ask that you strengthen and sustain us through the turbulence of life's ups and downs. We ask that you teach us to see everything and everyone through the lens of Jesus Christ. And allow us to show compassion and love to, to everybody that we come in contact with. We ask for your forgiveness of our sins. We ask that you help us to, to become more committed to serving you and, and living for you and only you. We thank you for all that you do for us and in our lives, and we continue to just praise your holy name. We continue to pray for every nation. We continue to pray for world peace. We pray for the president of the United States and the leaders of this country. We ask that you give all of them the wisdom to make the right decisions for all of mankind. We pray that all of the glory, honor, and praise is returned back to you. You are so deserving. We pray this in Jesus' precious name, who is the one who taught us how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For that is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Those who are able, will you please stand for our hymn of preparation, which can be found on page 139 of your hymnal. Praise to the Lord Almighty. We will sing verses 1, 4, and 5. The words will also be on your screen. Amen.
Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You know, Mother Teresa once said that it's not how much we give, but how much love we put into our giving. When God gives to us, no matter what it is that uh, we receive, we are blessed because it came from God. You can best believe that there is always a lot of love in what God gives to us. There are times in which the church needs us to give money. There are also times in which we may need to give food or water. And there are also situations in which our time is needed to be given. But there's also a time when our gifts and talents are needed to be used. Whatever is needed, let us try to do our best to supply that need. Being a cheerful giver in the name of Jesus. We have an amazing, loving, caring, and, and giving church here in Lewistown. So let's continue to be all that God would have us to be and to do God's will in our giving and in our sharing. Let us continue to glorify God in our giving and in our serving towards each other, remembering that our giving is a reflection of the love that God has given to us as we now give God's tithes and our offerings. Will the ushers please come forward? as we are blessed, excited, and delighted to give. For those who are watching online and would like to give, you may do so by sending your offering in to Lewistown United Methodist Church at 11032 Hesson Bridge Road, Thermont, Maryland, 21788. This time we will be blessed with a selection by Ms. Pat as we take up our offering. Amen. Please stand, those who are able. now join us in our prayer of consecration. God of the ages, we share our tithes and offerings this day with you, but we acknowledge that most of the time we are clinging tightly to what we have, afraid we might lose something we need, and afraid somehow there won't be enough to live our lives. The scarcity mindset overtakes us and it robs us of the joy of our days. Remind, Remind us, us that Jesus, Jesus has called us to be ready to let go of this life so that we might claim the abundance of life eternal. In our Redeemer's name we pray. Amen. 
Amen. You may be seated. The first scripture lesson comes from Jeremiah 31, 31 through 34. The days are surely coming, says the Lord, when I will make a new covenant with the house of Israel and the house of Judah. It will not be like the covenant that I made with their ancestors when I took them by the hand to bring them out of the land of Egypt, a covenant that they broke. Though I was their husband, says the Lord, but this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them and I will write it on their hearts and I will be their God and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, know the Lord, for they shall all know me from the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord. For I will forgive their iniquity and remember their sin no more. God's word for God's people. Amen. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Can we give our letter just a hand clap praise? <laughs> Amen. Thank you so much, James. Awesome job as usual, my brother. All right. Uh, the gospel lesson is coming out of the book of John. The book of John. <laughs> And it's coming out of the 12th chapter, uh, verse 20 through 33. And here with us says the Lord. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks, were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. And Philip went and told Andrew, and then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. And Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life, whoever serves me must follow me. And where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled. And what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it is for this reason that I have decided to this hour. Father, glorify your name. And then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. Verse 29. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, this is Jesus talking, and I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. Again, and I, when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people to myself. If you have your own Bible, I would say highlight that verse right there. My goodness. Verse 33. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. Lord have mercy. That is the word of God for the people of God. Amen. Thanks be to God. Amen. I want to put a tag on this text and I want to use a subject from which to preach. Don't ever stop lifting up Jesus. Don't ever stop lifting up Jesus, will you pray with me? Gracious God, we give you honor, glory, and praise for all that has taken place in the service thus far. And now it comes time to bring forth your holy word. So I ask that you speak to me right now so that I can think only your thoughts. Use my mouth as your mouthpiece to declare and preach and teach your holy word. Help me to speak it with power, conviction, and clarity. Now let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart always be acceptable in your sight. O oh Lord, my rock my redeemer and all God's children say 
Amen. Amen. As many of you know, I have, uh, well, me and my wife, we have three wonderful and beautiful children. We have been blessed beyond our measure and comprehension. Glory. Hallelujah. All three of them have brilliant minds and wonderful personalities and really good qualities in terms of trying to be good human beings. Thank God they got all that from their mom. <laughs> and so we cannot thank God enough for what God has lent us during this life cycle and through this generation. Me and my wife are blessed. One of the things that truly amazes me about them is the fact that they are very different individuals in terms of their likes and, and their dislikes and their strengths and their weaknesses and so on. You see, God being the amazing creator that, that God is, realizes that there is beauty in being different. Otherwise, we would all have the same thoughts. We would all do the same thing. And, and this world would be much different because it would appear that we, we are all robotic in the sense of mimicking each other all the time. What a boring world that would be. There will be no emotional feelings or connection to, to each other and, and definitely none towards God. And so even though we are very different in many ways, there are some things that we do have in common as human beings. There are some things that, that we all do the same way based on our mindset in terms of resolution and getting ourselves out, getting ourselves uh, uh, out of what appears to be overwhelming situations. Let me explain what I mean. I can remember uh, my three children uh, first learning how to walk. They, they, they used to do something that I, I believe all children do this. And that is when they got tired of trying to walk or, or they could not negotiate unleveled ground, they would do this. They would stop and then they would look up at their father. And then they will hold up one hand as if to say, Daddy, you're going to have to help me with the, with the healy challenges that I'm facing right now. I need you to hold my hand to help see me through this. Have you ever been there? When life gets too tough and you're struggling to climb those, those healy challenges, well, because you have a connection with Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, and, and Jesus has a Father that we call the Almighty God, then we too can look towards the, the hills which come of our help, knowing that our help comes from the Lord. But not only that, we too can, can put our hand up in the air and speak to the Lord and, and tell him, Lord, you're going to have to hold my hand with this one because the, the storms of life are raging and, and I need you to hold, hold on to because I know that you will, you will see me through. So church, don't ever stop lifting up Jesus. My mother-in-law, Mama Jean, would, would go to the nursing homes every Saturday to sing. And sometimes she sing this song called, I Can't Even Walk Without You Holding My Hand. And I believe it's, it's around the third or fourth verse that's my favorite in the song where it says, I think I'll just make Jesus my all in all. And if I'm in trouble on his name, I'll call. And if I didn't trust him, I'd be less of a man. Because, Lord, I can't even walk without you holding my hand. I like that verse right there. So, church, don't ever stop lifting up Jesus. But sometimes the, the road gets even tougher than just healing challenges. Remember, I remember when we had our, our townhouse down here in Frederick, and, and this particular day I had little Michaela out in the front yard, and, and she was walking at the same time. Uh, at, at the time, she was walking at the time. She was small, but she was, she was walking. But she was still in that mode of, of holding up one hand every now and then when she would get tired. And so, and so while we were down on the sidewalk in front of, of the house, a cat came walking towards her, just slightly a bit. And when Michaela saw the cat, she turned to me and she looked up at her father. But she didn't hold up one hand. No, she, she put up both hands. 
as if to say, Daddy, this situation is about to get out of control. I need, I need more than you just holding my hand with this one. I need you to pick me up and carry me this time. Which is funny because she's got two cats at her house now. <laughs> but has your road ever been so rocky that, that you had to look up to the Lord and ask him to carry you through because you're facing dangers and toils and snares? I know I have. I've been there when, when things have gotten so rough that I had to, to call on the name of Jesus. Things have gotten so bad that I didn't know how in the world we were going to make it. And, and so during your darkest times, please understand this. We have a Lord who is our liberator, our savior, our healer, our redeemer. We have this man named Jesus who, who promises never to, to leave us nor forsake us. As a matter of fact, he tells us in, 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 in Matthew chapter 28, the last verse, to remember that I am with you always, even until the end of all ages. We have a God that, that never sleeps nor slumbers. That means that, that late in the midnight hour, we can, we can lift up both our hands and call on this amazing God. Father, I stretch my hands out to thee. No other help I know. So church, don't ever stop lifting up Jesus. Because Jesus responds to us, because, because Jesus loves us, and he loves when we, we have a, a close bond and connection with him. Jesus loves when we have a relationship with him. And when you have a, a strong relationship with, with someone, then you can rest assured that, that when you call on them, they will respond. That's what Jesus wants from us. Strong relationship with him. He wants to be our, our bridge over troubled waters. He wants to be the one who, who will see us through. Why? Because Jesus, our Lord and Savior, loves us so much. As a matter of fact, he loves us unconditionally. So church, don't ever stop lifting up Jesus. When we lift up Jesus, we, we are also lifting ourselves up. I don't know about you, but when I call on the Lord, there's, there's something about the name of Jesus that just lifts me up. My spirit is lifted because I know what the Lord can do. My spirit is lifted because I can look back over my life and know that if it had not been for the Lord on my side, I wouldn't have made it through. My spirit is lifted because I recognize that, that Jesus sacrificed himself just for me. What the Lord has done gives me salvation and eternal life. No, the devil can't steal your joy because when Jesus is lifted up, he brings you closer to him. Watch this. In the book of John, there are three references of Jesus being lifted up. In chapter 3, verse 14, when Jesus is talking to Nicodemus, he explains to him how to be born again. And he tells Nicodemus in verse 14, he says, And just as Moses lifted up the serpent in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may he have eternal life. He's pointing Nicodemus back to the Old Testament scripture in the book of Numbers. In chapter 21, where the Israelites became impatient and, and frustrated with God and Moses because of their circumstances, and they just kept complaining and complaining and complaining. You ever been around somebody who just complains all the time? Oh my God, it'll drive you bonkers. 
And they just kept complaining about God and Moses. And Moses prayed to God about this situation. And the Bible says that the Lord gave him instructions to mount a bronze snake on a pole and raise it up. And God's power will cause the people to repent of their sins and turn to God in faith and be saved. It's the Old Testament. Well, just as the snake was lifted up on a pole, so was Jesus going to be lifted up on a pole. Better yet, a cross. And everyone who looks at him in, in repentance and faith will be saved. Jesus is so awesome that, that he removes the sting of death and preserves us from the snake bite of Satan. And so when Jesus states that the Son of Man must be lifted up from the ground, he's talking about his crucifixion. Because this sacrifice will bring us closer to him. And it will draw us to him just like metal being drawn to a, to a huge magnet. So church, don't ever stop lifting up Jesus. But there's a second part in all of this. Jesus was also speaking about being lifted up in his resurrection, the ascension, the exaltation. Jesus was lifted up from the grave when God raised him from the dead. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 3 and 4 says, For I handed on to you as, as uh, of first importance what, what, in turn had what I in turn had received that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. You see, Jesus was lifted up from the earth and returned to heaven after his resurrection, and now Jesus is lifted up over every angel, every authority, every power, and he sits at the right hand of God the Father above all creation. So church, don't ever stop lifting up Jesus. One of my favorite songs is called, Lord, I Lift Your Name on High. My goodness, I wish I could sing, Andy, because I was singing it. Many of you know Pastor Mark can't carry a tune to save his life. Lord, pray for me on that. But here's the one verse in the chorus to the song. Lord, I lift your name on high. Lord, I love to sing your praises. I'm so glad you're in my life. I'm so glad you came to save us. You came from heaven to earth to, to show us the way. From the earth to the cross my debt to pay, from the cross to the grave, from the grave to the sky. Lord, I lift your name on high. I love that song. So church, don't ever stop lifting up Jesus because it was Christ who was lifted up on the cross for you and for me. You know, one of the most powerful preachers of his day was the famous preacher named Charles Spurgeon. Uh, Charles Spurgeon was an awesome man of God. The crowds who wanted to hear him preach were so large that before the church was able to construct a building large enough for the seating, they had to rent out a hall which seated 10,000 people. And so for many years, tickets were required to get to hear this awesome man of God preach the word of God. And then there's a story that was told that a visitor from America came and he was very eager to hear the prince of preachers do his thing. And so he convinced one of his friends to, to purchase some tickets so that, so that he could attend the service. And after the message concluded, the American stood in the, in the vestibule of the church talking to his English friend, and, and, and he didn't know that the Spurgeon was standing nearby listening to the conversation. 
And so the Englishman asked his friend, he said, what did you think of the service and the preacher? And the American said, man, oh man, what a preacher. He said, he was simply amazing. He blew me away. And according to the story, Spurgeon began to weep. And a church member asked him, what is wrong? And Spurgeon said, I wish he would have said, what a savior, instead of saying, what a preacher. You see, our purpose is not to gain honor, glory, or praise for ourselves. No. It's to bring glory to the Lord. We often fall in, into, into that terrible trap of wanting people to recognize how, how special and gifted and, and hardworking and devoted that we are. And, and so we tell them to make them happy. But let me tell you this. The temp temp temptation to make sure our efforts are recognized by others puts us in a very dangerous place. Anyone who is spending time bragging about himself is walking on the pathway of pride. And that path always, always, always leads to destruction. Jesus said, and I, when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw all people to myself. That is primarily a statement of truth about his worth through his death on the cross. But it's also true of our service for him. When we lift Jesus up rather than ourselves, men and women are attracted to him. So church, don't ever stop lifting up Jesus. Amen. 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 Will you please stand those who are able for our closing hymn, Leaning on the Everlasting Arms, page 133 of your hymnal, and the words will also be on the screen.
Amen. Nobody wanted to lean with me, but that's all right. I'll lean by myself. <laughs> Amen. Now unto him who was able to do exceedingly and abundantly, more than we could ever think of or imagine. Gracious God, you have been so good to us. You continue to be so good to us, and we can't thank you enough. As we leave this place, may we never ever leave your sight or your protection. May you be with us wherever we go, wherever we be, until we're blessed to be together again. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Go in peace and have a blessed week. Blessed week. Amen.